I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. I was an early adopter of folding phones. That thing falls in the pool and then what? I go and get a folding laptop. And then now here I am on short circuit doing a sponsored unboxing of the Find N3 Flip from Oppo. Another folding phone, but with some interesting features. It doesn't even look like a folding phone. Wow, there is almost no crease. Yeah, you can catch it a little bit, but that's with the screen off. That's pretty cool. I'm sitting here going, you guys, you bait and switched me. It's got really thin bezels. It has very little discernible crease. It's not even thick. Ha. Huh. all right. Included in the box, you've got a type A to type C cable, a charger. Wow. What's next? Is it gonna come with a screen, oh, it does have a screen protector on it. I mean, that makes sense. Most folding phones do come with a screen protector. How long they'll last, that varies a little, but it does have one. And look at that, you can get a case. I like to live dangerously, so I probably won't use this, these. Uh, oh, oh, oh wow, there's adhesive and everything. But there you go, they've got little protectors included. Put them on a little something like that. And wow, that is a giant camera bump. I don't even mean that it's super thick. Once you've got the case on, it's not gonna be the sort of thing that you would notice sliding in and out of your pocket. But they've got three shooters on this thing. A 50 megapixel wide angle, a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle, and a 32 megapixel portrait camera. What makes it a portrait camera exactly? Let's go ahead and get it fired up. Even before we've got it fired up, there's plenty to look at on the outside though. Next to the camera, we've got their cover screen, which has Corning Victus glass and support for over 40 apps. So you can snap pictures or uh, change your music without actually opening up your phone, which they claim is good for 600,000 openings. And that crease I talked about before is apparently just 0.015 millimeters in depth. On the right, we've got our lock button, which does include a fingerprint sensor. Seems like it does. Sick. Volume rocker. Then this is interesting. I noticed this. They have a ton of antenna bands around this thing. I don't know if that's specifically what they're referring to in this talking point, but they say the phone has what they call a 360 degree surround antenna to help alleviate dropped calls. So no matter how you're holding it, it should always get good reception. In practice, I don't know how well that works on this phone. We're gonna have a chamber set up to be able to test this sort of thing, but we're not there yet. One thing that stands out right away is the screen's nice and bright. Uh, oh, okay, we have that at like crank brightness. I'll set this to kind of what I would normally consider to be reasonable. And man, with the screen on, okay, seriously, can you guys even see the crease now? And the hinge design, which they're calling their micro carved flowing hinge is apparently rated for 600,000 openings. Now guys, from my personal experience with folding phones, I'm not gonna oversell the durability of any hinge until I've actually seen it survive hundreds of thousands of folds. But I will say that the crease is, or lack thereof, is really impressive. It just feels like a regular phone. You just flip it open. Oh, that's a really satisfying sound, isn't it? Oh, right, I never showed the other side of the phone. Check it out, alert slider, baby. It disappears from the iPhone and boom. It shows up on an Oppo. In all seriousness, this is probably inspired by their OnePlus subsidiary, and it's a feature that I have absolutely loved since, well, forever. It's a great feature, just being able to quickly switch between silent, vibrate, and ring. Enough about the internal display, though. Every phone has one of those. I wanna fire up the external one and see what the experience is like. Ah, it's like having a cute, adorable little phone. Ah, oh, this is so ergonomic. I could take all the selfies. Wow. That's actually really, I am directly backlit, you guys. The portrait mode apparently mimics the bokeh of the Hasselblad XCD 30 millimeter lens, and the 2X camera is apparently designed to mimic the bokeh effect of the Hasselblad XCD 65 millimeter lens. Now, obviously, you don't have the same sensor in here that you would in a Hasselblad camera, and this is still going to be processing effects to a degree, but this is a collaboration that's been going on between these guys for years now, and I've gotta say the immediate impression is, well, you know what? I'll just let you guys be the judge. That is, that is a pretty convincing bokeh effect. 
It's still not gonna be on par with the best non-folding phones. I don't wanna set unrealistic expectations for you guys, but considering the size of the camera bump, especially relative to the overall thinness of the device, like it doesn't protrude that much. I think the results speak for themselves here. It's pretty impressive. Quick to, oh, 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 interesting. Wow, there's all kinds of things you can do up here. You can have a few shortcuts here, like, I don't know, setting a quick timer. Boop, use gestures to make it go away. Bring it down from the top. You've got your main quick toggles. You can turn your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on and off. Then if you swipe in from this side, you've got apps, like weather. Hey, Cloverdale. It does 30 FPS 4K recording on all cameras, including 32 megapixel hole punch selfie camera. And, okay, I hope they have an easy way of changing it from a vivid profile to a more natural one. Yay, oh, this is perfect. Color temperature, nice and granular, vivid, natural. Ooh, pro modes. There you go, how's that? Oh, that looks so much better. Now seems like as good a time as I need to talk about the main screen. They claim it'll hit a peak brightness of 1600 nits with a pixel density of over 400 pixels per inch. It's 6.8 inches and will go anywhere from one to 120 Hertz with an LTPO type OLED display. So basically this is as state of the art as it gets, but not quite as bright as you might find in a candy bar design because come on guys, it's folding. It's that, that is sort of part of the point. It does support HDR 10. So you'll see that it'll immediately flip over into HDR mode as soon as you open up an HDR YouTube video or something like that. Ooh, and you can adjust brightness in HDR. This has been a big push from Google to help the OEMs better implement HDR on their phones. That looks really nice. One other key spec for the main screen is that it's polarizer free, which means it won't go dark every 90 degrees if you're wearing polarized sunglasses. And the whole thing is powered by a MediaTek Dimensity 9200, which is, Kind of wild to think about a phone that costs anywhere from 900 to 1,000 US dollars having a MediaTek chipset, but they have come a long way. And the Dimensity 9200 looks like a solid competitor against the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's got 12 gigs of LPDDR5X memory, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3, NFC, which is actually really solid when you consider that we're getting better 3D performance than the N2 Flip on top of it lasting for substantially longer. Wow, it reaches a 100% charge in an hour, which is a huge improvement over last gen, taking just 58 minutes with its 44 watt Super VOOC charging, which may not be useful all the time. Personally, I only charge at five volts, two amps maximum. But if you're in a hurry and you wanna plug into a fast charger, which conveniently they actually include, which is nice, it is really nice to be able to have, you know, a 50% charge in under half an hour. This is an odd one. They specifically mentioned that the main screen supports always on display, though for me personally, I would fold it when I'm not using it, but. It... Not the main screen, it's the cover screen that supports. Oh, okay. The main screen doesn't, but that's okay. Cause I was sitting here going, what? <laughs> well, how would that make any sense? When you're not using this thing, it should be like this, but this screen does. So you can have new notifications just pop up on the always on display. So you can just kind of have it sitting next to you, check the time, quickly access whatever quick widgets you need and see any incoming notifications. I wanna see that fingerprint sensor again though. That's pretty fast. Of course, the most important feature is one I haven't talked about yet. And that is the digital pet that you can keep on the outside display. This is great, you click and hold the cover screen. All right. And it brings up all these different views. You got weather, you could delete that. You've got, ooh, interactive pets. Just like real pets, except they don't pee on your stuff, which is great. Let's go with this one. Is that a cat, a mouse, a balloon, a beaver? I think it's a beaver. What do I do with it? The interactive is this just here all the time? Yeah. This is clearly targeting a different demographic. I, sure. <laughs> Why don't we go ahead and uh, check out the speakers? <laughs> huh, that's a lot better than I expected. What is it with flagship phones and making like equally expensive laptops look stupid? I don't get it. You, if anything, you have even more challenging design constraints. Oh, speaking of packing things in, it supports dual nano SIMs and eSIM and is available today. Thanks to Oppo for sponsoring this video and to you guys for watching it. See you again at the next short circuit.